Yo, how you guys doing? Let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Testing, testing, testing. So we got a new setup here. Uh, let me turn on the music a bit. All right. I hope everybody is well. Uh, yeah. So new setup. I just want to see how this works out. So let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So as promised, uh, based on the votes in the system, uh, I'm going to do the shows at 8 p.m. New York time, 8, 8.15. Uh, for the foreseeable future, and you know, we'll see what happens. But that was, uh, I think, over 50% of the people wanted this time about. So here we go. That's it. So uh, thanks for joining the stream. Um, if you hit the like button, I would appreciate it. Let's the Google al algorithm know what's going on. I got camera one, that's working. Camera two is, all right, so we're good. We're good, we're good. So I'm going to wait for a few more people to get on, and then we're going to jump into the subject at hand, and then we'll do a little bit of Q&A, of course. It's just true, sorry. Ruby, 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 can you hear me, Ruby? They say if you get COVID, it will affect your cognitive skills. Everyone stay safe. It's true, it does. It's true, it does. Yes, okay. Greetings from Oklahoma. I can hear you. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Laugh out loud. Very good, very good, Andrew. Cool. Yeah, by the way, uh, when you log in, when you come in, in the chat to say greetings from where you, wherever you happen to be in the world, it's kind of cool for everybody to see. And yeah, so let's do that. What's up? I'm doing the devil sign all of a sudden. What's up? What's going on? Over everything as well. Uh, yeah, so I got this going. All right. Is this going to block? All right, good. Cool. All right. So, what's up? I released a video earlier today on um, my main channel, answering some questions were put to me. And then I also released, well, it's going to be released tonight. A video, it's about an 18-minute video to describe what I'm doing in terms of my COVID situation. Well, long COVID situation. So you may find that interesting. All right, how many people are we now? All right, 39. So I'll just jump into it. It's a pretty simple subject. Somebody asked me in the comments under the last video, what is simple code? What is clean code? Clean code is simple code. Now, I've described this in details in other videos, but when you're writing... Uh, when you're writing clean code, 
it's very simple. It's fine grained co code, fine grain code. What does that mean? Basically, you want to divide your code. You want to put it into small chunks that have each of those little chunks have its own logical purpose or operation. So, for example, if you're writing a function or a method, method is just a function in object-oriented languages, but you're writing a function, you shouldn't have a function that does 20 different things. The function should do one thing, maybe two things, that's it. And what you do is, why would you want to do that, first of all? Because it makes the code a lot easier to maintain and manage. Uh, that's, first and foremost, the most important thing you can do with uh, code to keep it clean is to have it very uh, chunked into little chunks of logical uh, code inside of function, inside of methods. I'm trying to keep my jargon down to a minimum so beginners can kind of understand what's going on here. Another thing you can do to make your code clean is you have a consistent naming convention with everything in your code, whether it be functions and variable names and so on. Why a consistent naming convention? Because if you have a, a consistent naming convention, meaning you name parts of your code in, with the same pattern, it's a lot easier to uh, to debug code, to find things in code, because the pattern will guide you uh, to bugs and so on when you're um, when you're working with the code. So just off to, just off the top of my head, that would make that's what makes clean code: consistent naming conventions, fine grained code, and just have. Um, uh, consistent conventions within the code base so that other developers when they come in or yourself you just make sure you keep consistent that way and it will just make the code a lot easier to write and to debug down the road especially so there you go that's clean code pretty simple pretty simple i teach that by the way i weave that into even my beginner courses i teach the basics of clean code good coding conventions that go a long way to making uh, code a lot easier to work with. All right, so there you go. This, this thing is changing. How quickly is we changing here? Okay, it's not so bad. All right, so what we got here? So we got uh, greetings from Alabama, Ruby, Ruby, Ruby Town, <laughs> New Jersey. We You should do a meet and greet in Montreal. Yeah, maybe I could do one. I don't know how many people are from Montreal, though. We'll have to see. Greetings from South America. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Greetings from Lakeland, Florida. So there you go. All right, so um, that was the subject. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions tonight? Let me know, and I'll jump into it. But that's pretty much uh, the subject of tonight's video. Kind of simple. So let me know if you have any questions. Now your opportunity to ask. Yeah, yeah, 42, let's get the likes up. Yeah, sure, yeah. If you can, please hit the like button so other people will know that we're online. Uh, the Google algorithms, it, it really pays attention to that, that's for sure. Uh, Israel here, thanks a lot. Very cool. So what else can I tell you? I don't know. So I'm trying out a different setup tonight, a different angle. I'm now using my MacBook Air here to uh, stream the content and I got my iMac here to monitor things. Um, I'm doing this because when I do travel, I'm gonna be using this laptop to uh, stream. And of course I got two cameras going. Uh, all right. Oh, oops. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the insert ad button by too much. <laughs> so, all right, let's go on. Um, good evening from Brazil. Very cool. Hey, Stefan, have you given a bun a bun a try or hot or any hot takes on it? What? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. Hello from Seattle. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming. Uh, can you read your? Can your cat read your code when it's clean? There you go. Uh, I bought the refactoring JavaScript version. I see the use of factory functions. Can you explain what it is their main purpose and when should you use them? Ah, the factory pattern. Uh, factory pattern is just a way to... It's been a while, man. 
watch factory pattern. I didn't use it too often. It's it's from what I recall, and I'll take this verbatim. For from what I recall, the factory pattern allows you to. Uh, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a brokering pattern where you have a single function that can then you you can use to generate. You know what? I'm not going to go there. I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember. It's been such a long time. I don't have all the answers. I would have to review factory pattern. Not something I would use very often. Uh, hello from it. Probably it might come to me in the stream. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Hello everybody. Hello. So yeah, now's your chance. If you want to ask me a question, uh, it's a kind of a, it's a quiet evening so far tonight. So now's a good opportunity to ask questions. Uh, uh, Bun.js is a new JavaScript runtime that runs faster than Node, and it can use all the same npm packages. Yeah, I haven't used it. I have not used Bun, so I have no opinion on that. Hello from Chicago. I just started learning front end, so far enjoying what I can do uh, with HTML, CSS. Ah, very cool, man. Glad you're enjoying it. Let me extend this a little bit more to 20 seconds. All right. Do you have to be a great designer to freelance? No, you don't. I'm asking because I'm not laugh aloud. You can just use templates, follow basic design principles so you don't bust the templates, partner with uh, good designer types, and you should be good. Hello, Jammin. How are you, man? Hope everything is well. Yeah. Are you familiar with the page object model? If so, could you explain this? Hoping you're doing well. The page object model. You mean the document object model? Are you talking about JavaScript? Hello, Steph. How's everything with you? Everything's good. Very, uh... Oh, there we go. Thank you for bringing that. Thank you. This is not okay. Yeah, yeah. I had, honestly, I had forgotten. But that's, I... Mm, the factory pattern is where you have a function that returns the appropriate implementation of an interface conditionally. Yeah, that's where I was kind of go, trying to go with brokering. That's what I had remembered. But uh, that seems right to me. It's hard for me to work. Our rain chances has been between 50 and 80% for 14 weeks. The rain chances remains high through next Tuesday. I hear you, man. I hear you. The rain comes down pretty hard in Florida, don't know. Looking to jump back into development after being a software engineer manager. I think I can still monetize my experience somehow on the side. Um, how so? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Let me know. What experience? You mean your managerial experience you want to monetize on the side? Is that it? Uh, there we go. I got people who are up on top of this. That's good. Uh, the, the side was class to instantiate. Okay. So there you go. I'm currently working as analytics implementation developer. Do you think that experience... Hmm. Let me pause this. Do you think that experience... Let me try this again. I'm work currently working as an analytics implementation developer. Do you think that experience helps to get into web dev? I use JavaScript. I use JavaScript and CSS to track ecom data and feed it to a to GA, but no dev work experience. Uh, yes, if you're writing JavaScript, uh, CSS to track ecom data. How are you using CSS to track ecom data? But anyway, if you're writing code, you're writing JavaScript, yes, that's a good way to uh, start the whole thing. Yo, yo, Camacho, how are you? What's going on? Thoughts on Next.js? Have not used it. Sorry, God. Your camera crew is even better than your bokeh skills. <laughs> now, the, camera the camera crew is an application. Thanks. Recently got a new C Sharp Junior Dev job, and the company still heavily uses old version of .NET Framework. Should I be worried? No, 
just um, your junior dev, learn, 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 learn. Once you learn the old stuff, to move to new stuff will be quite trivial, so I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Uh, Manuel addressing the fine people who went into the factory program. Thanks for the factory clarification. Yeah, just by looking at the example from the book, it was returning other functions, so your explanation aligns with that. Oh, there you go. Very cool. Yeah, my apologies. I honestly had forgotten all I knew. All I could remember was it, it brokered code. I didn't use it too often personally. That's probably why. Now that it's, you know, not, I'm not hitting, I'm not hitting on uh, or slapping down on factory patterns. It's just not something I did too often, I guess. That's why I forgot. Do you have any thoughts about meta certification certificate for front end dev? Meta certificate. I'm not a big believer in certifications um, in terms of getting jobs. I believe in experience more than anything else. That's just a general uh, feeling, even though I do provide certifications, like a lot of school certify their students with, my, with the studio web platform. Managerial experience, yes, I'm thinking of coaching for juniors, but I might be too green or not sure if, if it is a marketable skill. But you can just try it out, see what happens. If you you have good management um, experience, you might be able to do that. Try it out, see what happens, you know. CSS selectors, ah, really? Okay. Yeah, then if you're doing JavaScript and CSS, then yeah, for sure you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to, uh, Parlay that into the web dev, web dev space. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, the thumbs up, guys, if you don't mind. Give us some thumbs so the, the YouTubes will let people know. Good music in the background. The volume level is perfect. I appreciate the feedback on that. Cool. How are you doing? Are you getting any support from the government to deal with your health issues? Um, well, I'm in Canada. So in Canada, we have universal... What kind of universal care? Um, if you have something that happens, you get in a car accident, you get, uh, you get confirmed cancer, heart heart problems, whatever, blood problems, all that is covered by the system. But the weakness is in getting diagnosed, getting um, uh, trying to figure out what's wrong with you. You have to know how to work the system. Sometimes it works out well and it flows. Other times it's very difficult. So we have like a, a hybrid system. Yes, we have universal health care, but we also have paid. So I've been paying to deal with this, uh, this ongoing uh, situation I have. So that's for sure. So I've, I've been paying to see private clinics, private doctors, um, I played for certain blood tests, other blood tests I was able to get more quickly uh, through the public system. So it's kind of a balance of things. Um, from a purely pragmatic point of view, I think uh, if governments have like a catastrophic care type of guarantee so people don't bankrupt because of medical expenses, then I think you're a much more competitive society. But you also have to have private as well. So, uh, yeah, that's my answer there. Page object model is a pattern used with Selenium web automation thing where you design your classes based on the pages of the website app. Okay. Um, yeah, I've never used Selenium, and so I would have to look at that. That's an object, page object model is a pattern I've never heard of, uh, but there's so many patterns out there. Uh, so I have no opinion. Does it work well for you? If it works well, use it. One of the main reasons you have design patterns is to, um, well, number one is to be able to communicate uh, a method of resol resolving a piece of uh, functionality you want to implement. So you would say, okay, we're going to use the page object model to do X. And people who know the page object model will go, okay, now I know what he wants. Uh, an alternative wants to do. That's one reason that you have design patterns. The other reason you have a design pattern is that it uh, it provides uh, uh, best practices, if you will. You know certain design patterns are tried and tested uh, ways of implementing something in code. So it's a good way to learn how to be, be a better coder. So yeah, I never use Selenium and page object model is not something I'm not, I'm not familiar with. 
hired to update some hired to update some Python yesterday. So clean afterwards, comparing pixels went from raw loops to some function tools reduced on sets. So nice to write clean and perfect code. Ah, very cool. I can see the satisfaction there. Never liked CSS. Dealing with design patterns is boring for me. That's why I use Bootstrap. <laughs> I will slap down on on factory patterns. It's never used because it's silly. Uh, well, maybe that's it. I don't have an opinion because it's been a long time since I looked at it. As again, as I said, my memory it was a brokering pattern. So I guess I was I was kind of there. Dynamic programming or dynamic programming or I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, should we send our CV in a word format or PDF? I hear there are scanners that sometimes reject your CV can't be, be read. It's such a PDF. I would just output it as a PDF because it's for security reasons. Um, you can put stuff in Word files, like a cost file, at least you put it in the old days. And you never know, maybe they don't have Word. I don't know, maybe they're on, they're on Mac and they don't use Word. I don't know. So, yeah, I would uh, definitely uh, be using uh, PDFs. What's the best way to gain experience as a beginner? Build things, build things. Go out there and build some stuff. Can you tell us a bit about PHP? Is it the back end language or like a SAS or like SAS? is to CSS. Now PHP is a is a proper programming language, although initially it wasn't. It's a back-end server-side programming language. That's what it does. It writes code on the server. It competes with JavaScript on the server, C Sharp, Java, Ruby, uh, JavaScript, of course, and others, Perl. Um, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people love it. It's the most popular and widely used server-side server-side and server-side coding language out there largely because of cms's like wordpress and others but it's just been around for so long and it was so approachable versus other competing solutions out there that its popularity has stayed around forever there you go do you have thoughts about frustrating situation where you face problems requiring to be patient and to read a lot while also having a short deadline, pushing you not to work cleanly. Paradoxo. Yeah, well, that's uh, it's part of the game sometimes, you know. It's part of the game. You got to try to set priorities and try to figure out what's the quickest way to get the job done. That comes with experience, you know. It means what is your personal thought on dynamic programming? Oh, I don't have any. I, I've not done... I'm an OOP procedural guy. Um, have I done other stuff? I haven't done fun function. Oh, dynamic. You mean okay? Are you talking about the dynamically dynamic languages versus strongly typed? I mean, PHP is the goat. If you are applying for a web dev, one way to tell to your future employer is to show your CV in a web page. Yeah, I always suggest that people build a website uh, where you put your CV and you put your projects up there as well. Hey, Steph, I'm currently studying law in Germany. I realize that I have amazing content for learning app for law. Decided to develop it. My started with a best JavaScript right now. Very cool. Yeah, good job. That's what you do. If you if you, you see an opportunity, knowing how to code allows you to an opportunity. Thanks for updating my student profile with CSS Pro version. It's all locked. So I guess I'm doing CSS again. Oh, yeah, send me your email. I'll, 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 I will unlock it. The difference between it is uh, the Pro has an extra chapter which covers some, some grid and flexible stuff like that. So yeah, just send me an email and I'll unlock that last chapter for it. PHP up is super fast. And so yeah, yeah, even PHP 7 is uh, very fast. JavaScript has helped me understand HTML and CSS. I noticed the more I apply the knowledge, the quicker I learn, of course. Can you learn Python and JavaScript at the same time? You can. Uh, you know, once you've 
you're comfortable with JavaScript, then I would just jump into Python. You'll learn Python in a fraction of the time now that you know JavaScript. Uh, can you start doing projects after I complete HTML and CSS? Yes, you can do HTML and CSS project. Or do I need to complete JS before I start building a project? No, you can you can jump into it without JS. You can definitely jump into it without the, uh, JS. Are data structures and advanced algorithms ever used aside uh, of interview? Yeah, data structure and algorithms are not used in production code unless you're doing game app de game development, building engines, AI data sciences maybe but for most business apps, they're, they're not that important except for the very very basics but any basic course will teach you what's the difference between bootstrap and react oh very different very different bootstrap well bootstrap is pretty big but most people deal with bootstrap just strictly for layout um, where react allows you to add a lot of uh, functionality and repaint and draw information from sources and repaint it on the fly. Uh, that's a very basic explanation. Yeah. Steph, clean code need a lot of common. Um, no, like it should be, if your code is clean and your nomenclature is, is well structured, you shouldn't need many comments um, in your code. If you need a lot of comments, that means your code is not well structured and clean. Um, we put comments in when we have a chunk of code that we've made some, we've made a decision in the code, in the logic of the code, that required uh, some, some pretty thoughtful consideration before implementing. Oftentimes you run, not often, well, fairly often you run into situations in your code base where uh, there's two or three different ways in which you can implement it. And, and for sometimes, for very subtle reasons that are not obvious, you would implement it in using option B, C, or whatever. Um, so that's where I would put code. So I would say, we're doing this here because this isn't. But that's a, it shouldn't be riddled with comments. I hope that makes sense. Good question. Do you think ORMs are bad for beginners? No. Why, why would you think that? I've taken three years off after 15 years dev experience, spent the time pursuing music, building games, and music apps, and trading precious metals. Should I dedicate much room on my resume to explain I'm off? No, I would, you know, if they ask, you can say, I took time off to uh, develop my own games and music apps. Uh, but when talk about trading precious metals, show them that you're writing code, developing your own ideas. That will look well on the resume. Not that there's anything wrong with trading precious metals, but it's not... It's not uh, relevant necessarily uh, to the job, unless you're going to trying to get a job at a company that trades in precious metals, I guess. Uh, why is Java loved by big business? Uh, Java is it's, it's, its legacy now. It was so... Java had its big move in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, early 2000s, and so much investment in Java now huge amounts of money these companies have invested in Java. So they're not going to drop Java unless they absolutely have to drop Java. And that's really what it comes down to now. It's not necessarily because it's their favorite. You know, it's, it's got all this legacy code. I'm not going to get uh, It's a really compelling reason. Not really. Dynamic programming is a different way to calculate the answers for logical problems. A big amount of data, not enough time to brute force the answer. Yeah, yeah, that's something I can't comment on because I would have to look into dynamic programming. The only thing I know of is uh, dynamic language. But hold on, what do you think of new dev tools? Teleport HQ that exports clean code of, of XJS, React, etc. I haven't looked at it. 
cold translation matrixes like this if i if i understand what it is something not, not it's not anything new you see new iterations of these things every so often so it could be good do you follow psr standards and coding on php uh no well, i don't code in php these days personally uh java is still huge definitely worth learning as a first language these days yeah definitely uh, psr standards let's see what the psr standards are hold on just checking that out oh php standard recommendations PHP Standard Recommendation, PSR, is a PHP specification published by Framework Interoperability Group, PHP Big. It serves the standardization of programming concepts in PHP. The aim is to enable interoperability of components. The PHP Fig is formed by several PHP framework founders. Ah, no, I was not aware of the PSR standards. That's post my code intruder. When did they come in here? I have PSR 0. I got many. Well, I got money. When does this come about? Now, I wasn't aware of the PSR standards, but here you go. No, I, I can't say what I do. I have, for my devs who work for me, I have my own standards that I have them implement, something I've been using a long time now. I would have, maybe I overlap with the PSR standards, I wouldn't say, but I haven't used it. It could be very good if practical people implemented them uh, can you build a scraper with java yes you could i would do it with python but you could in java here hope you're doing well i'm doing pretty good today pretty good after finishing your python program what can i build well the python program will allow you to build uh, a bunch of guis uh, text-based games um, the, the, it's, it's, it's a foundation course so it teaches you it assumes you know nothing about software development but you get out of there a real comfortable understanding of python which will allow you to do some stuff some python scripting and so on but more importantly you have that basic understanding so you are, you're able to maneuver into uh, any area that you want to maneuver into uh, what's the income tax rate in montreal well, it's Quebec. Uh, Quebec income tax rate. It, it what is it? I think over over seventy five thousand. I have to go check. I have my I have accountant to take care of my taxes. Over seventy five. It's 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 a progressive tax system. So as you make more and more money over a certain point, so I get over 75,000, your tax rate, I think it's over 100,000, your tax rate is like 50%, it's crazy. And the corporate taxes are far lower. Por corporate tax rate in Canada, Quebec, would be 18.5%. Yeah. I was hired as a contractor to complete a project, but it's gone way over the number of hours. Not uncommon, by the way. Uh, they cap my hours, of course, and now I'm working for free. How can I avoid this next time? Should I drop them? I don't know what the contract is. I don't know what your agreement is with these people. Um, yeah, I in my freelance course, I teach you how to avoid that very thing, how to price it out, how to set up the contract. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. I, how much more work do you have, you know? Did they take advantage of you or you were just made a mistake on your end? You know, you don't want to burn bridges unless you absolutely have to. If they were like evil and lied about the requirements or something, that's one thing. But if you just messed up and you got to try to, you should be, try best you can to fulfill your obligations, especially if you want to keep them long term. I'm currently signed up for your mentoring program. How do I get access to Sunday afternoon chat sessions? By the way, the quality of your teaching in your course has made me understand. good. Have made understanding easier. Um, yeah, when you got your mentoring um, email with all your credentials, there was an email to the forum. We have a private club in the Killer Sites forum. In there is for all Zoom 
if you can't find it, um, it's in the email that you got. If you can't find it for some reason, just shoot me an email with your mentoring ID. Tell me you can't figure out where the forum is and I'll see you get it. And that's how you get the Sunday to the chat sessions. What does a GUI do? GUI is a graphical user interface. It's the visual part of an application. It could be a web app, could be your iPhone app, doesn't matter. It's the visual part. The buttons and all this kind of stuff. I just realized I know enough JavaScript to move to a library. Would you recommend learning React or Node next? I want to know that nice burn stack. I don't know, it's up to you, man. I would just, I would, you know, since you know uh, JavaScript, and I assume you know HTML and CSS. I would go to server now, learn some Node and some server-side JavaScript, and then you can jump into React if you like. What is the what is better to freelance or to contribute to open source projects? Freelance is always better. I say freelance is better. If you're dealing with people, with clients. You could be earning money. Not that there's anything wrong with open source, but I would say go what is the best tutorial for very big code coder check out mine below that's what i'm famous for interactive training very different from anything else out there on, on the uh on the interwebs i'm sure some people could test to that in the stream All right. how do you assess legal risk before publishing your own app depends on the app it depends on what field you're in right i don't know if it's medical that could be some liability issues there I don't know. It depends on, you know, it's not so much it's not so much a code issue, but it's sort of a, what market you're in issue. Can you hack YouTube? I never tried. I say no. Yeah, I would agree. What do you think about Paths Stack, Postgres DB, Alpine JS, Tailwind CSS, HTML X? The only thing I've heard of in that group was Tailwind CSS. Somebody Matthew, he really likes that. Quite a bit. He's a guy in the mentoring group. He's now a professional developer. Um, I haven't worked with Pastack. Postgre, very powerful. We've used it in the past. Although I tend to use MariaDB just because it's easy. Um, Alpine JS, don't know HTMLX. I don't know what that. I know what the HTMLX is. I would have to look that up. Now let's see. Let's see what HTMLX. Hold on. One advantage of having two HTML. What is that? There we go. HTMLX.org. HTMLX gives you access to AJAX, CSS transition, WebSockets, and server clients. And server sent event directly in now using attributes so you can build it. Uh, okay, so it's a library. Hmm. That's it. One of the, I never used this before, so I couldn't say. I don't know. Have you tried it? Does it work well? Perhaps it does. All right. Any recommendation how to keep a website login secure? Ah, yes. In that situation, I would be using a framework. Because uh, authentication layers can be a real pain in the butt to produce. So a framework is my recommendation in that regard. Uh, okay, what do we got here? Who's texting me? All right. What else do we got here? I'm learning Python, and so far I haven't written more than 20 lines of code per program. How many lines are there in a completed professional project? This is also related with clean code. Okay, well, if you're writing little 20 line scriptlets, if you will, uh, it's uh, it's relevant. Apps are just, you know, bunches of 20 lines of code all organized in a particular structure. Like in my Python course, you will write a lot more than 20 lines of code to produce stuff. But there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Python is a weird bird, you know, it's uh, what I would do is I would start looking at the Python modules that are out there. There's so many and find a module or some modules that are interesting to you and implement them. You got modules that do all, you got modules that do web scraping in Python. You got modules that order pizza in Python. 
So look at the modules, find something that's interesting to you, and uh, try to write some little apps that way. In my Python course, I teach you, I think I use, it's been a while, I think I use the drawing, some of the drawing modules, Turtle, to teach you how to use modules and teach you some other basic concepts. Would you recommend opening a business corp instead of offering dev services as an individual to start? Uh, good question. That depends entirely on uh, the legal and uh, business ramifications of that, depending on where you happen to live in the world. So if you live in, what camera is that? Okay, it's that camera. Okay. So you, if you, you know, when you set up a business or a corporation, the advantage of that business or corporation is for usually tax advantages. It also gives you a liability shield. Most of the time when you're writing code, you know, you have a good contract, you know, you say once they sign off, so you're not responsible. You know, you're pretty protected there. But again, it depends on... Uh, and usually corporations, the tax, your level of taxation are lower than as an individual if you're making over a certain amount of money. Again, this is, this is where you would ask an accountant or a bookkeeper in your part of the world. So I don't know what the tax laws are, are where you are. So for example, Quebec, I think if you're making over 60 grand or over 75 grand, it's better to have a corporation for tax purposes. Uh, Canada, we're not very litigious up here relative to the US. Uh, so you don't have that too much of that. Um, if you're making under whatever it is, I think it's been such a long time since I've started. If you're making under a certain amount, then it's fine just to have a personal, uh, just run it as a personal business. Um, why you wouldn't you use a corp? Because there's a lot, there's more, much more cost to set up a corporation, and the accounting is usually much more expensive every year. There you go. Any promo codes tonight? I don't know. Email me, and I'll send you a promo code. I'm 42 and completely new to this. Well, welcome to the stream. There we go. Welcome to the stream. There we go. Look at that Boca game. Is that a cool? Look at that. All right. Um, you're the only voice in my head when it comes to coding. I look forward to your mentoring program, especially before the price goes up. Laugh out loud. Yeah, just so you know, I'm transparent. Well, thanks. Well, I uh, soon welcome to the mentoring program. Um, just so you know, if you're thinking about it, I am going to be raising the prices. First time in two years, I'm raising since the beginning. And Still going to be far less expensive than uh, any editor boot camps out there. I don't think it's even close. But I'm going to raise my prices just a little bit in September. So, you know, uh, I am from Brazil where there are a little outdated on the development of web and web apps and apps. What edge technology should I focus to take advantage of this gap in the market? Well, I don't know where Brazil is right now, so it's hard for me to compare. So I couldn't say. Um, again, I don't know where your your skill is as well. Like, do you are you comfortable web app developer? Do you know the web stack? Can you do CRUD operations? Do you know you full stack? I don't know where you are at, and I don't know where Brazil has, is at. That being said, um, that being said, if you know any type of development, you're going to be in a good position. There's such a huge demand, and even if you uh, even if you learn a technology, let's say you learn Python Django and you find there's no jobs in Python Django, which you shouldn't do, you should research in advance. But let's say you do that, for you to pivot to it, say Node.js, JavaScript would be pretty easy, or PHP Laravel, pretty easy. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. How many live mentoring sessions do you do in your program? Right now, we do a live coaching group session every other week, every Sunday. We've been doing this since the beginning. You're welcome to join anytime. So, yeah, that's typically in a group. 10 people to 15 people will show up. Sometimes a little bit more, but typically 
capacity because people move through the system and they graduate, right? We record all these mentoring sessions. So uh, if you miss a particular session, you can uh, go watch the replay on demand. We even allow you now to ask questions in advance in the forum, in the private forum. And then when I start the group, the group coaching session, I answer those questions on the top. So there you go. So it's basically, uh, it's, it's unlimited really. Why is YouTube stay home hard to hack? Why is YouTube stay home hard to hack? Uh, I'm, I'm missing that context there. I always watch your videos to get to get from your experience, Uncle. You are the best. Well, I appreciate that, Captain Black. Much appreciated. Cool. All right, keep missing the camera. Up. All right, there we go. So there you go. Sixty-six likes and sixty-six um, viewers. Kind of a small viewership tonight, but that's okay. Intimate little group. Intimate little group. I'm from Michigan. Do you have any opinions on TypeScript? I've heard people suggest skipping learning JavaScript separately and go straight to that. Depends what you want to do. You know, for every TypeScript job, probably 10,000 JavaScript jobs. Uh, you know. Yeah. So what else is there? Hair recursion. Well, recursion is, uh, is a function or method calls itself. Um, it's, it's I'm trying to come up with an example, but a good example when that's implemented. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a self calling method. You use it maybe in situations where some uh, bunch of data you want to iterate through. Iterate, I mean, you want to process um, uh, on a high level. That's what recursion is. Some people like to use it all the time. I use it once in a while. It's a it's a basic concept though in um, in software development. That's for sure. Yeah. So, any other questions? PHP or Java harder? Java is harder. The great amount. It's a headache. Laugh out loud. Recursion, potentially. Yeah. yeah. See, guys. Some of you know, I. when it comes to software development, there's so much out there, like, you know, HTMLX, uh, the factory pattern. You should remember these things, but I've, I literally now forget much more than I now know. It's like, if you don't use things for a while, you forget, but that's okay, because you can go to Google and you can just Google up factory pattern. And uh, or Google up HTMLX or Google up et cetera, et cetera. Recursion. Yeah, yeah. What you'll find in software, there are typically many different ways in which you can get the job done. Uh, on a very basic level, you have different types of looping. You got for loops, you got while loops, and there's other loops. And sometimes, People use this type of loop or that type of loop depending on what they're working with, the data that they're working with, and sometimes it's just a matter of personal choice. Are you good at lead code? Uh, probably not. I never used lead code. Lead code came way after I was uh, actively developing. I manage people now. Currently studying an M started, excuse me, currently studying a MD on AI. And they are teaching me a lot of C++ or Python. Uh, would you recommend learning C++ to the fullest? No. Depends if you want to use it or not. You know, again, production on linea, um, you'll find that um, as you become more advanced in the coder, you learn that it's impossible to know everything and you got to let the market dictate what you're going to learn because you could you could spend the next 50 years trying to master just like a small fraction of what's out there and, and you'll never come close so you just want to learn enough fundamentals and then you learn what you need to learn based on the, the demands of a particular job so to answer your questions do you recommend learning c plus plus to the post short answer is no 
it's not a negative comment on C++, but you learn what you need to learn about C++ to get the job done and you move on. Unless you just have personal interest, you may like it, you know. Is the complete web dev course based on the latest or do you recommend HTML, CSS course? HTML5 CSS. I teach HTML5 and CSS3 in my Clippy web dev course. I already have some familiar, familiarities with CSS3. You will learn HTML5 and CSS3 in that course. Uh, more than enough to be able to build modern websites and web. In short, your experience with YouTube as a developer. In short, your experience with YouTube as a developer. I'm not sure what you're asking me, the truth. In short, your experience with YouTube as a developer. I've never uh, tried to interface with the YouTube API as a developer, if you're asking that question. Should I get Python 3 Foundation certification from Beginners Python 3? Well, you, oh, with the cert, that's only if you want the certification. Some people want the certification. So I have a package where you get the Python 3 course and the certification, which is a proper exam you got to do and pass. Or you can just do the Python. Like I said, uh, certifications are not extremely important. And I sell certifications, you know. You know, for me, certifications are worth this much. Well, certificates of completion are worth this much, which is uh, basically nothing. Uh, certificates are worth this much. We actually test it. That's what I provide. But experience is worth this much. Any coding predictions for the near future? Will AI enhance programming? AI is already enhancing programming. I've actually reviewed a few, reviewed a few AI-based uh, code completion tools, if you will. They're pretty powerful. Um, yeah, so the future of programming is more and more abstraction, um, meaning you're going to have more and more tools that will write code for you or provide, or provide more intelligent boilerplate code for you. I don't see that as uh, changing uh, coding anytime soon and replacing coders anytime soon. But coding is pretty static nowadays. Yo, yo, what's up? What's up? What's a course you recommend for someone who's just finishing CSS3? Well, I would jump into JavaScript now. Can you really learn coding after age 35 or does it become much harder? No, sure you can. I have a guy in my mentoring group. He's in his early 40s and he learned and he had a job as a full stack developer. Uh, documentation is key. Yeah, yeah. Any open source product documentation is key, especially. Great answer. Thank you. Uh, uh, you can't go wrong with either. I did, I did the full stack after mentor next. In the mentoring program, if you're interested, it has all my courses, including the full stack courses, it's all there for you. It's up to you which one you want to, if you want to go. Uh, so it was nice. Ask the fan. Hello. Hey, how are you? One thing about the certification, it tests your skills. If you pass the certification exam, I got HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, PHP, and Python. If you pass, you know that material. You, you say, if you pass my, my certification, because it's all randomized. So some, whenever, every single certification exam, is you are fed a random set of theoretical and code challenges. And... And if you fail, you have a cool off period for seven days, and then you can try again, because that's life. Life's about being able to reattempt, and you can try again, and it's legitimate because you're gonna get a random set of questions again. Every every time a question is sent to you one at a time, it's drawn, it's randomly uh, uh, sent out. So every, so you could be having start the exam, and a split second later, somebody else is doing the exam beside you, and he's gonna, have, he or she is gonna have a different set of questions. Uh, yeah, certs, yeah, certs are not worth much unless the companies pay for it. I took an AWS cert last year and forgot quite an amount of it. Laugh out loud. Yeah, you just gotta get into it. The key to being a professional developer, I keep trying to emphasize this, is to just get the fundamentals really strong, good coding practice practices, understanding the basic uh, design pattern, 
You don't have to know them all. I, I forgot what a factory is. I just knew it was a brokering uh, fund. Um, and um, refactoring, learn a little bit of refactoring, and that's it. And just get out there and start working because you never know what the opportunities, what where the jobs will take you. You may find yourself doing some stacks and some languages you never considered you would. That's just normal. How are we doing for time? Oh, almost almost an hour. Time flies. Uh, where do you see AR and VR languages that are suitable for those technologies? Um, I think it's going to be platform specific. Where AR and VR, what languages, which languages that will be important for AR and VR will largely depend on what platforms AR, VR platforms are going to be successful. So I think that Swift, because Apple apparently is really working hard on that. And I would imagine Swift, Apple's uh, high level language, and it's a good language, by the way, um, that will probably be, be important for AR and VR because Apple will probably be, be one of the dominant impl implementations, if you will, with AR, VR. And if you're thinking about uh, on the Android side, will probably be uh, uh, Kotlin. Kotlin. Uh, that said, there's probably going to be some good, and I've seen some good um, web-based uh, AR and VR implementations using J. So that's not for you. What do you think of that Google lad saying their AI is becoming? Uh, I don't know. I have to look into it. I, I, I heard the guy in an interview. You know, that, that actually brings up a philosophical conversation about sentience. I have uh, my major in psychology, so I kind of understand that. And I think that there's a debate, and it's really hard to, it's really hard to determine when an intelligence becomes sentient or not. Um, back when I was in college, uh, my anthropology professor, one of my um, electives, he used to suggest that sentience animals were non-reflective. That was his belief at the time. That was the thinking of the time. So they weren't sentient in the same way humans are. Now we know better. We know that animals can actually have memory and they are reflective. So it's a very difficult question. So coming back to you know this this Google guy saying that AI is becoming sentient, I think it's a matter of interpretation, perhaps. I don't know. Are there different level of sentience? You know, I don't know. Difficult to say. Medium to large projects are the best certifications. Yeah, yeah. If you can actually uh, show live projects that you built, that's the best certification. That is what's going to get you the job. There's no question about that. I would agree. But even a bunch of small ones are pretty good too, if you're a beginner. Can you explain how C++ is used in web development in simple terms? It's not used much. It's not used, not used much at all. And generally speaking, you wouldn't use C++ in web development at all. Except maybe if you were talking to some C++ libraries, to access some hardware. So you might use JavaScript or Java to communicate through some gateway to some C++ libraries. But uh, in the old days, way back in the early, early 90s, you used to do CGI with C. And then that got replaced by Perl. All right, do you have any opinion on using Golang for server-side development? I have not used it, so I don't have an opinion. I'm interested in learning another language for doing work in this area. Coming from a background in PHP and Node, what I would do is I would look at the marketability of the particular language. See, where is Golang used? How is it used? What type of companies use it? Why do they do, they do, why do they use it? And then look at other languages. Um, ask the same questions. How long would you say it takes from someone from knowing nothing to getting a job as a programmer? Um, 
I'd seen people do it, get entry level within three to four months. That was very fast. I say most people's realistically six months to a year to get into entry level. The key is to get the job as quickly as possible so that um, you can start really learning from work. That's how you want to learn. Apple has garbage support of gaming, though. I haven't used it, so I couldn't say. What is your vision about Flutter and Firebase? Well, I think Flutter's got a future. How big? I don't know. All right, guys, it's been over an hour. I appreciate it. We've come to the end. Thanks for joining the stream. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, what to take away from the stream? Clean code is simple code. It's fine grain code. You can find older videos on my YouTube channel where I go into more detail explaining it. I even write some clean code, I think. Um, yeah, that's the key. The other lesson to take away from this video is even old whippersnappers like me, I forget some, I forget things. That's normal. In software, it's so huge, it's so huge that you'll forget things from time to time. That's normal. You just go to Google and you look it up, no big deal. It's not expected, actually, that developers know everything. That's for sure. Uh, so stick to the fundamentals, get good at that, and you'll be well on your way. Again, thanks for the likes, thanks for the thumbs up. If you do like this stream at this time, please uh, leave a comment below the stream in the YouTube comments. And if you're um, if you're interested in my uh, mentoring program, I invite you to check it out link below, Uncle Steph. As a heads up, the price is going up for new people. If you get in, you will be grandfathered in. So don't worry about that. Hey Kelly, how are you? Thanks for joining. Thanks so much. Got here late. Uh, but I have a great night, everyone. You too. Take care, everybody. Four hours of focus work. Is it enough? Yeah, three to four hours is the max, I recommend. Thanks, Steph. Take care. No problems. Thanks for joining. Cheers. I will leave you with my ASMR video. Let me pause. Give me a second.